There seems to be a direct correlation between being a flat earther and mathematical ability. Now, that is not necessarily the fault of the flat earther, but when they try and use that mathematical ability to try and prove a point, it rarely ends well. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick mention on the Simon Dan podcast. Episode two is out now. It features Dr. Becky, the astrophysicist. So please do check it out. Links for that will be in the description. Right, here we go. And Trey Clark Theories has decided to show us all that there is a problem with the brightness of the moon. Get your mathematical brains warmed up, people. You're going to need them. Okay, so we're, I'm just going to go, I'm going to start dividing 240,000. It's 239 and change is how far the moon is away. But for some reason, this is elusive to seemingly very smart people. Okay, so he's got 240,000 written down to represent the distance to the moon in miles. Gotcha. So we're going to divide or multiply times 0.5, okay? Sorry. I'm doing this real time because I was accused of like, use your math. I want to see your math as if I use different math than every other person. 240,000 miles times 0.5. All right, so that's 120,000. Okay, so he's halving the distance to the moon. Not sure why he needs a calculator for that, but maybe he's being thorough. The decimal start getting weird, I'm gonna start rounding up and down. So then let's times 0.5. We'll do just like five times in. 60,000. Sorry, this is weird. I'm trying to fill myself in right at the same time. So times 0.5, we know what that's gonna be. 3,000. Okay. Sorry for that glare. Of course, we know what this is going to be. Fifteen. We'll go two more steps down. I'll save you the agony of this and skip to the end of this section. So, we'll start with one lumen. Okay. Right, so he's written down one lumen. Lumen is the total amount of visible light that you can get from a light source. The moon does have a rough value of one lumen when it's full. So we're gonna double it here, okay? We're not gonna keep squaring the one. We know why we're not doing that. So this is gonna be two. This is gonna be four. Uh, four times as bright. This will be 16, right? Not really sure why he's decided to double one and square everything else. Because obviously if you square one, that's one. But we'll let him continue with his point anyway. And I forget 16, 16. All right, so 16 times 16 equals 256. It's still normal. Please don't square 256, please. All right, now 256. All right, now it gets interesting, right? 65. Oh, of course he has. So many lumens we got working with here. All right, 65,000, that's, that's a lot to deal with. Okay, so let's double that, or square that. Uh, 65, 5, 36. Row, row, then it gets interesting. All right, so already 
We're at a pretty big number here, right? Four billion two nine four nine sixty seven ninety six. I'll tell you why this is ridiculous. Four billion lumens. The brightness of the sun here on the Earth's surface is roughly in the order of 100,000 lumens. So, as we can see, this gets pretty weird pretty quickly. So we're just, uh, we're just squaring. Starting from one, square it. Four, 16, square 16, 256. 256 times 256, is that right? That seems high. Yes, it is. You shouldn't have done it, but it is the right answer. Nope, that's it. And of course, we know squaring 65,000 is going to be a lot. So that's, that's where we are. <clears throat> so let's just say you're trying to deal with 256 times <clears throat> brighter than what you're normally doing with a regular earthly camera. That's my point. Okay, right, here we go. So, Trey thinks that when you half the distance to something, that you have to square the brightness. And because of this, his argument is the moon would be way too bright if you decide to zoom in on it with a camera or got too close to it. And his dodgy maths makes him think that the whole premise of the moon regarding the heliocentric model is incorrect. Well, here is why he is wrong. The inverse square law of light is as follows. So this means that if you're halving the distance to something, then it will become four times brighter, not squared. Look, one over 0.5 squared is one over 0.25, which equals four. If the distance halves five times, then you'll have one over 0.03125 squared, which is 1,024 times brighter, not 65,000 times brighter, as Trey suggests. It's the camera. The camera, because you can compare all these points along the way, and you can disagree with these, but that's why I say name your number. If these are wrong, if, I'm, if, this, if this number is wrong, use 0.5. Use 0.1, okay? But keep squaring, and once you get to the moon at 240,000 miles, you're gonna have some issues. Because you don't keep squaring it, it's simple. And it's going to be right in between here and here that I'm going to be able to pick it apart with the specs of a camera. I'll be able to do it with, without getting anywhere near this. Because we know the specs of the camera, we know the film, and we're going to have to figure out <clears throat> how they did it with mittens on to change the film and take a picture every 10 seconds, 24-7 uh, for three days. We're going to have to figure that out. So if you want to duck out of this and you want to be a gamma, that is fine. But I'm not saying all these numbers are exactly right along the way. I'm saying one lumen is about right. <clears throat> but call it point one lumen. You're still going to start finding yourself in a lot of trouble right around here. And you're still seven or 3,700 miles away. No, you're not. Well, you are. Because if you start squaring decimals like 0.1, then the number is going to get continually smaller and smaller, which then defeats your point. Maths, buddy. Okay, so that's, that's kind of my, my point. If that's not good enough as far as math, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. This is, uh, this is just basic stuff. Yet you managed to get it gloriously wrong. This is using the inverse squared law. No, it is not. You seem to have forgotten about the inverse bit. You close the distance by half, multiply the brightness by four. Or you square the brightness. But that isn't the same, is it? Multiplying by four and squaring it. I, I don't know what else to tell you. That you hashed up and to forget everything that you've just said. This is an issue because other flat earthers that can't do maths, sorry flat earthers, well, listen to what you've just said here and repeat. If you can come up with a different number than, than what I am here, you know, and I'm, I'm ballparking here. That's not the right number, and this isn't the exact number, you know, but it's close. You know, it was really more for decimal points. So, all right, we'll see how that 
if you want, if you're going to argue with me, show me your work. Do what I just did. Say so no, no. And then when you end up on the moon, I want to take that number and I want to uh, see if it works with the camera they used. You should want the same thing. You want me doing this or you want a lie. And we get to the second thing you've got wrong. Zooming in on something isn't decreasing the distance to that object. It's zooming in on it. So the brightness will be the same. If you don't want me trying to figure this out, or people like me trying to figure this out, then you're just, you're no good. Uh, you want people trying to figure this out. No, please continue, because you are hoisting yourself on your own petard. How bloody satisfying was that one, people? Another Flat Earth Friday, all wrapped up in a nice, neat little package. Of course, if Trey Clark wants some help with the maths, then he is very welcome to contact me. Thank you all very much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday where the dinosaurs return. See you then.